Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode of Content Cells, there's something really exciting that I know you're going to want to know about. You see, Michelle and I have a fabulous online course also called Content Cells. In fact, this podcast really came out of the popularity of that course, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of people go through the program and get so much out of it. Now, it's valued at $697, and we've never done this before, but for a limited time, we're going to be giving away free access. Now, it's a four-part course delivered online over four weeks, and it gives you a really solid grounding in content marketing. And the really awesome part is that you also get four weeks access to feedback and support from me and Michelle while you're doing the course. It's a really valuable course, and it's yours free, but only for a limited time and as a special bonus because you are a Content Sales Podcast listener. Now, you can get on the early priority list for that course now over at contentcellscourse.com. That's contentcellscourse.com. Just fill in your details and we'll be in touch with all the details about how you can get your free access and what the dates are, when we're starting and all that. So head on over to contentcellscourse.com and get your place. And I look forward to seeing you in the Content Sales Master Course. Let's get on with the show. Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Sales. Hi, you're listening to the Content Sales Podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to Episode 96. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co-host, Michelle Falson. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Susie. I am fantastic. Thank you very much. I am very much looking forward to today's guest. Me too. It's been a very long time since I've spoken with her and she's been up to some really great things. Um, Today, as Michelle said, we have a wonderful guest for you. We're going to be chatting with Natalie Sisson, who is Chief Freedomist at Natalie Sisson Limited. Now, We'll talk a little about what that is um, when we speak to her. But she's an author and a speaker who's on a mission to help busy entrepreneurs redesign their business so that they're working less, earning more, and actually feeling the freedom that they wanted when they started their business. Sounds like, <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Great plan. <laughs> she's the number one best selling author of The Suitcase Entrepreneur and a speaker who runs a six figure business while maintaining a freedom lifestyle that she absolutely loves. She's just released her new book, The Freedom Plan. So today we're going to be chatting with her about how you can use a book as a way to build your profile, tap into um, your experience and share that with the world. And we're going to be doing that by tapping into her wealth of experience as someone who's literally built her business based on her content and ideas and books. Mm, That's right. With a laptop and a smartphone, Natalie has built this six-figure business uh, that she can run from anywhere in the world, really, you know, from from her content. And Mm. interestingly, 
Her first book, The Suitcase Entrepreneur, was born from her successful blog of the same name. And it's interesting to hear the story of how that kind of evolved. And we'll talk a bit about that today. And now with this new book, The Freedom Plan, she's got some great ideas happening around promotion and, you know, really creating products and services for readers of the book if they want to learn more. And, um, you know, both Susie and I have had the pleasure of knowing Natalie for some time. She's smart. She gets stuff done like very few people I know. Mm-hmm. And, and I love how she does all this while still maintaining this freedom lifestyle that she's so, so passionate about. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get her on the line. Hello, Natalie. Welcome to the Content Sales Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. It is so great to have you here and we want to make the most of this time that we have together. So I'm going to dive right into our first question. Now, you've got two books under your belt now, one that's been a bestseller and one that's absolutely new into the market. Tell us what you would say has been the most significant benefit to you as a business owner of being a published author and having your books out there all over the world. I think um, for me personally, it was the clarity that I got through writing the book really helped me hone and refine who I am, who I serve and how I show up in the world. And I think if anybody ever wants to get very, very clear on what that is, writing a book is a brilliant way to go about it. And also that you have to be ready to write a book. You have the message ready. You have something you want to teach and some way in which you want to serve people. And from a business point of view, just massive amounts of credibility. I'm sure you've heard this before, but, you know, writing a book is a massive feat and it's hugely challenging and also very rewarding. But marketing it and publishing it and getting it out there and, and making it a bestseller mm. and something that people will consistently read year after year mm. is is really precious. And I think for me now, it's the fact that I still get people who have read The Suitcase Entrepreneur saying, this book changed my life or I've done this since then. It's just the fact that a book can keep on giving long beyond uh, what you intended it to do. And I think that's really amazing. Mm. Mm. Yes, that idea that a book can keep on giving. I think for some people, though, um, they have a book that that disappears pretty quickly. Mm. It doesn't kind of keep on giving. Uh, And what I love about what you did, especially with your first book, and I'm sure you'll do it with this one, the new one, but with the first book, Suitcase Entrepreneur, it had such a a long life. It stayed so relevant. Um, Whereas, you know, I've seen people publish a book and apart from that sort of initial spike in interest, it dissipates pretty quickly. And I'm curious, what are some of the things you've done to create more longevity in your books in terms of keeping them top of mind for people and part of a conversation that your customers are having? Well, I think first off is making your book kind of timeless in terms of, you know, there was a lot of information in the suitcase entrepreneur around tools and technology that can date pretty quickly, but having that as a resource on my site where the um, resources are always updated and also picking a, you know, a niche or an industry that is just growing and growing. And for me now as a non kind of digital nomad, so to speak, I just see more and more people entering that space, more and more millennials picking it up and loving it. So I feel like the book is going to be relevant for many years years to come because even though when I was in that space heavily it felt like everybody was a digital nomad or location independent the reality was is it really Mm, weren't you know people still will go what's that Um, so that's one of the factors and then I think also making a book in, in this particular genre it is Um, you know, very practical, but it's also got a good dose of inspiration and it is really focused on, you know, what's your plan and your vision and how do you want to show up and live your life? And I think that will be timeless forever um, in a non-conventional kind of way. So those are the things that I think have really helped. In addition to that, um, I love celebrating. I like birthdays. I like celebrations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it's the one-year book anniversary or the two-year book anniversary, I've either done specials or promotions or blog challenges or giveaways. Um, And I just think, you know, a lot of people, we put out so much content as content creators, and a lot of people forget about how important that content is and that there's no amount of ways in which you can repurpose it, um, massage the content, put a fresh perspective on it, release it into the world in a different format, audio, written, blog. So I think that is something that I do really well. Like if I'm really looking back Mm. at things is, is, you know, how do you make content timeless and classic and repurpose it in formats that people may not have seen yet? And always not forgetting that there's always going to be new people being introduced to your work or the message that you have and that they need to see it and hear it. And you can't just rest on your laurels and assume that they'll find it. Mm. Mm, such good advice. 
And, you know, you've got your new book out now, The Freedom yeah. Plan. Yay. Uh, so that's something to celebrate. For <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so can you tell us a bit about that book? And also what I think we're really interested in for our listeners as well is how the book fits into your overall content strategy and some of the innovative things you've done to really ensure that, that the book does, you know, build your profile, that it does have that long, rich lifespan. So many interesting questions there. I think I'll start with the fact that this book is designed for a quite a different audience, the suitcase entrepreneur, although there will be some related um, aspects of it, the, the common thread of freedom that weaves its way through all my pieces of work. And for the suitcase entrepreneur, it was aimed at those wanting to quit their job or just starting out building an online business who also wanted to travel the world. Um, and this one is for established entrepreneurs who really started out with the purpose of being able to have a profitable business they loved with lots of freedom and the reality is that they're working harder than ever for less money than ever so it's really about them getting back to the roots of their vision and their why and then redesigning their business model to give them more of that freedom purpose and profits um so quite a different audience um and it's funny because if i look at the suitcase entrepreneur that came out of um you know writing on my blog for all those years the podcast everything that I learned um, and actually a blog series that I put out that I then encapsulated and I wrote the book entirely fresh content but it was based on the popularity of that blog series that mm. turned into a little mini pdf that then turned into my book and then I created my program out of the book the freedom plan so this book has come out of the program that came out of the first book so there's definitely <laughs> just I just find that really interesting in terms of reverse engineering things I think that's the power of um, you know keeping a common thread of your message and your teaching um, and what you want to share but continuing to evolve it for new audiences with new um, learnings I guess for them mm. um, and yeah what was the other the other part that I wanted to unpack there is with the suitcase entrepreneur, I think the longevity of that stuck with me because that was what I was doing and living and breathing for close to seven years. The interesting thing about this book, and I'm going to be really honest, is I felt like I wrote this book a year and a half ago, uh, which I did, and it's been almost two years in the making. And now that it's finally out, I'm really proud of it, and I'm, I'm really clear that it's going to help a lot of people. But I feel like the person who wrote it has already kind of moved on and evolved again. Um, and I find that's quite – I wonder how many authors have that as well because often with traditional publishing, um, by the time you've written the book and it's actually got out, can often be up to two years, which is a long time, and, and often your body of work has changed or evolved by then or you as a person have grown or you're moving on to your next book. Um, and that's kind of where I've got to with this one. So I'm really excited it's finally out and I'm, I'm happy to promote it and talk about it. And I've been on some fabulous podcasts, including this one. But there's also a part of me that's like, I just want to uh, evolve and move on to the next bit. And then there's this part of my foot being back here going, but it, <laughs> this book deserves the platform to be out there and it deserves to be, mm -hmm. you know, shared. Um, and then there's a part of me that's like, oh, thank goodness it's out. Can I can I birth the next thing? So I find that a really interesting dichotomy and, and position to be in. Um, and I think it just really comes down to having a game plan and a strategy of how to continue to get the word out about it, but also let the book speak for itself and the people who supported it through the Publishizer campaign two years ago um, and let the work and the message resonate with the people that it needs to resonate with. Mm. I want to talk about some of the innovative things that you are doing around the launch, but before we go, many, many years ago um, I published um, the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad for the author Robert Kiyosaki and it was the same thing as you just said, like the book was out, it was like number one on bestseller list everywhere, but he was on to the next book. So when it came into interviews, he wanted to talk about the next book and we were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have to <laughs> let this one soak. You know, this is the goal. This is where we need to focus. So I, I totally get it. And I think it probably does happen to screenwriters as well, you know, uh, you know, when they're on to the next film, you know, film producers, that sort of thing. But what I wanted to ask was that I heard that you're doing some really interesting things with the launch, including making use of Facebook Live. Can you tell us a little bit about though that because that uh, that sounds like something I haven't heard done. Yeah, I think because I have such a global international audience now being back in New Zealand, you know, I did a little tiny launch party with my dearest friends <laughs> last week in Auckland. I literally invited 12 people and all 12 people turned up and it really was just to celebrate them and their support for me and the work um, and, and a few of the bought books, which is lovely. Um, and then tomorrow night here in, in our barn, actually, we're having a little launch book party once again to celebrate community friends who have supported it. But I also know that there's tons of people overseas that have been in my 
community for years who won't get to do that. I'm not doing a book tour. Um, I just, yeah, with this one, I just didn't necessarily feel like I wanted to do one. And you can do a virtual book tour right through blogs and podcasts. But why I thought I'd start reading the book on Facebook Lives is that it's quite nice to have an author reading. And if you can't make it and you're not going to be in a bookstore, then That's there's cool. no better place than live streaming, right? Um, and it, it's neat and people get to hear a little bit more about it. And if people haven't heard of me before, they get to, you know, it's nothing more exciting, I think, than the author reading it in their own words. And I'm literally just flipping open to certain pages and giving some context and then reading a few pages. It is also getting me into the role of knowing that I need to record the audio book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just fun, I think, to bring a book to life and narrate it. So it's just one of one of the things that I'm doing, as well as tapping into all the people who um, funded it through the campaign two years ago and making sure that they feel served and they're included. And another part of it is actually getting people to take photos with the book once they finally got it and then celebrating them through social media as well. So I've got lots more photos that I need to put up, actually, but I'm just pacing myself. I love it. That's a really great idea. And I know that is something that I would tune into, you know, especially if it was one of my favourite authors or I'd, um, uh, you know, read something of theirs before. Now, you mentioned publishers. Publishizer. Publishizer. I'm, I'm yeah. assuming it's like a kickstart Sorry. program for <laughs> authors. Is that right? It is, exactly, yeah. and it's actually started by an Australian. They've changed their model a little bit since then in terms of um, – funding and matchmaking for publishers and published houses. But um, when I was using it, yeah, you could start a campaign, uh, talk about your book, and then people could pledge to say, yes, I want this book mm. to be written. But it was specifically for authors wanting to publish a book, whether it's, you know, um, a novel or a business book, etc. cetera. Uh, and it works exactly the same way as in Kickstarter. It had a smaller audience, but off the back end of that, it would allow you, the more pre-orders you got, mm. the more publishers it would open up to who might yeah. be interested in your book. Oh, very yeah. good. Now, yeah. now, what I understand also is that the book is an entry point for people to come into the Natalie Sisson world um, and <laughs> not only to be more aware of you, uh, but then to also be ready to take the next step with you and perhaps consider your other products and services. So tell us how that process works for the reader. Yeah, I like to, I guess, plan the sales funnel out because you should be intentional about this. And I know that a book is often a really great starting point for people to be introduced to your work. And then typically they'll want something free that they can dive into and see how, you know, your work and the way in which you teach or coach fits. And then obviously through to a, a product or a course and then through even to your premium tiered services, whatever they may be, depending on your business. So for me, I always wanted that from the book, they would be able to go into a a short free video series that would mm -hmm. bring the book to life or at least the main themes in it and from there through into my freedom plan accelerator um which is an online accelerator a course experience that i developed from the book so it's really bringing the book to life even more with some advanced strategies and the ability to um, be sort of taught through that with workbooks and pdfs and audios um, interestingly, I bought that out before the book because the book was due out in October. So I timed my entire launch of that to be with that. And then it didn't come out until uh, mid-November. And I decided, well, screw it. I'm going to put the course out anyway because it's mm. all related and all helps. And it gives me some – it was really neat to be able to get more – pre-orders and more interest in it and now it's something that can be evergreen and, and live on so depending on where people are at um i hope that they will read the book that they will watch the free video series and if the accelerator feels right for them they can choose to do that and and will be introduced to other things um that i provide that they can definitely jump into depending on what stage of their business and career they're in mm, great it's music to my ears, Natalie, to hear you just <laughs> planning that whole thing out in advance. It's, <laughs> it's so much about what we talk about on the show because, you know, you can – people think, oh, well, I'll create a book and then mm. they kind of put all this time and effort into a book and then the book hits and there's, there's this, there is this peak of interest and then they're scrambling to take advantage of that interest off the back of it. So it's wonderful that you really did – plan that all out in advance and um one thing i noticed that you said which i just wanted to pick up for the listener is that after the free video course uh, sorry after the yeah the three free videos you have the accelerator course and um that's a paid course obviously you get the people interested enough to buy buy from you then 
And it's interesting that it's an accelerator course. So what, you know, the, I'm imagining that a lot of what you teach them in the book in, in, is also in the course, but they've got the opportunity now to do it faster and perhaps with more facilitation and more support from you and perhaps easier. Is that how that works? Yeah, that exactly. And it's, it's going deeper into some of the concepts. I mean, there's only so much. I have a, a chapter in my book about designing a sales funnel that suits you and fits your business model, but there's only so much that you can actually write in a book. Um, and I love you know, diagrams and examples and case studies and being able to visually show people how to use the tools to create that. So that's what they get in the course. And yeah, I think it's for people who are like, I want to accelerate my learning. Um, I want to dive deeper into some of these things. And I want access to that well beyond in a format that works for you, whether that's video, audio or transcript. So yeah, you know, there's a certain type of person who will um, do that. I remember with Brendan Bouchard's High Performance Habits. I love mm -hmm. the book and I listened to the free podcast. So I got the whole book in the free podcast as well. But I went on to take his course because I was just curious about delving deeper into a lot of those habits. Um, and I like video format and I like it when somebody speaks to me and I, I learn with his diagrams. And yeah, so it was just a it was a no brainer to to do that. Mm. And that's what, you know, we've found in so many situations. There, There is a really good percentage of people who are going to want to do more with you and it's just putting it in front of them in a way that they think, yeah, that's what I want. And often, you know, being able to do something faster or have, you know, something made a bit easier for me or to go deeper into something I'm interested in, they tend to be the big reasons people are going to want to pay you or take the next step along that journey with you. Definitely. I mean, I love books and you can come back to them time and time again, but there's something about an online experience, as I like to call it, that just integrates and or integrates a lot of your learnings into a more practical format that's much more actionable. And so I know it works for me and I know it works for a lot of people in my community and I think it's silly not to be able to offer that. Mm. Now, I want to pick up on something you said earlier about your um, first book, um, actually coming from, emanating from your blog. So it kind of evolved mm. is my understanding. It was the blog and then yeah. you made a PDF and then it's turned into the into the book. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that and also whether you still believe that having a blog is a good place to start for people who may be thinking of releasing a book. Yeah, I, so it was a great, um, as I said, I think I was ready to write The Suitcase Entrepreneur after four years of writing around the topic. And so I wrote a really great blog series, a 12-part blog series that I put my all into and it went spectacularly well and got a lot of awareness um, and just built my community a lot. And then I, I took that even further and put it into an online ebook, an audio book, um, and even like a mini course. And then The Suitcase Entrepreneur came out of that. So even though, as I said, I rewrote the entire book, a lot of it was based on the premise of those things that people were finding super useful. And then I added in even more around um, the digital nomad aspect and the travel and relationship building. So I think had I not had that blog as a platform, but also a context for writing out a lot of the things that I wanted to teach and developing um, my processes and thoughts and methodology behind it, I wouldn't have been able to write the book. And do I still think blogs are useful now? 100%. Uh, it's a longer term play, as mm. I think you both know, like the content creation takes a lot of effort and a lot of time and there's good strategy behind it. But I think really for me, as I said, it gives you lots of clarity and ability for you to find your voice and your writing style and the message that you want to put out there. And it does force you also to go deeper into um, the way in which you gain knowledge and put it out there in a way that's useful. And I think from writing a blog or even from doing a vlog or a podcast, I mean, you two probably get tons of ideas just from listening to interviews and also in doing your own episodes just into what resonates with people mm -hmm. and then which of those things to take further. So I yes. think by proxy, just the art of having a blog or a platform helps you to illuminate your thoughts, clarify them and really solidify which things are resonating and then how to take that further. Yeah, love it. Love, love, love. Um, you mentioned earlier that, you know, you used uh, publishizer. I, I don't know why I have trouble saying that word, but publisher. It is actually a very hard <laughs> word to say, I think. <laughs> um, but, uh, but with publishers, like traditional publishers, um, mm. these days having an existing platform, having a, a big, really big database or a big social media following um, is almost a prerequisite when they're taking on a brand new author or it's definitely a plus for getting, you know, the door open. But it can be hard to do that when you don't have something uh, like a book. What is your take on going for getting a publisher or self-publishing? 
I love this topic um, because I've done <laughs> all three now. So I self-published The Suitcase Entrepreneur and it was um, amazing, a ton of work, but also a ton of freedom that you get off the back end in terms of how it looks, how it comes across, the pricing, what you give away, what mm. you promote, everything is under your control in many respects, but then also all of the work and the marketing, everything, mm. and the expense comes to you. Um, and then I had that book picked up by a traditional publisher last year, which was blew me away I was actually approaching them about the freedom plan and they said actually we love your suitcase entrepreneur could we uh, offer it to the US and North America market so awesome. that was um, bizarre and awesome at the same time because I got this really great upfront advance for a book that had been out for four years I did the third edition <laughs> and they um, they did a fair amount of marketing not much but they really came to me because I had an audience mm. and a platform so you're right that's what traditional publishing houses are looking for now because they realize that the industry has been disrupted and they can't rely on just a book getting out there anymore they need us as authors to actually be their marketing arm which was fascinating. And then for this one, I went with a hybrid publisher. And for those who are listening who might not know what that is, it's they do the design work, the editing work, um, and they get it into publishing, into bookstores and online for you. And they expect you to do most of the marketing. And then there's like a 60-40 split. So they take mm. 60% of the profit and you get 40. So they're doing quite a lion's share of the hard work. Like when I self-published, I found that was some of the hardest stuff was all the money spent on design and editing and um, the manuscript and then getting it online was just when you're new at it, takes a lot to work out. Um, so I think that was quite a good combination, but I must admit most hybrid publishers are, in my mind, maybe rather cheekily, a little bit more of a cookie cutter approach. So they, um, they have their way of doing it. They say they do certain things, but I've had to really push my publisher they've been great up front but then i've noticed nearer to the time of publishing i had to push and ask for all sorts of things and it's really just been me out there on my own um and that's been interesting and a little frustrating in places so now i've gone through the gauntlet i would absolutely self-publish again because there's right. always an opportunity for it to be picked up traditionally mm. and i think just with the traditional publishers and even hybrid they still have a long timeline from getting your book out and i think in a day and age when we have total freedom and power to write a book in a weekend i mean you honestly could it might not be great but you could write a book in a weekend and have it out on amazon on a monday yes. and that is just amazing mm. um so to me i would self-publish my next book Got it. I actually noticed even the Pages app on my Mac, um, it, I just updated the version and it said mm -hmm. one of the new features was being able to upload it directly to Amazon, which is crazy. Oh, that is so yeah, cool. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. <laughs> um, that is neat. For those who are listening who might be thinking, okay, I think I will do a book, when do you mm -hmm. feel the ideal time is for someone to add that to the mix? Like, do you, And part two of that is do you feel they need a, pla mm -hmm. a platform, a sizable platform first before they think about um, adding it to, you know, as a funnel item? Well, I'm a big fan of the saying, when would now be a good time to do that? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think there's nothing that motivates you more than having a really, you know, big-ass goal of I want to write a book. But I also, to come back to your question on platform, I – Yes, it's absolutely 100% helpful to have a platform and a community and an audience. But I don't think it has to be huge, if, especially depending on the niche that you're yes. writing about. There will mm. always be an audience there and interested if you are capturing, you know, a really, if you're teaching or if you're writing about a topic that people need to hear more about. And I think just even Amazon, there's many more platforms you can put it onto, right? Barnes and Noble, et cetera. But there is a massive audience of millions of people who can find your work on Amazon, um, even if you don't have a big platform to start with. So I think it's silly not to put it out there. And I really love the idea, and it really, this is how I think I'm going to write my next book, of publishing your book as you go on mm -hmm. Medium or through your blog or through your podcast. Because what I like about that is it, it you turn up each week and you write a little bit more um, live in some ways. You get feedback from people who are reading it and seeing if it's resonating, and then you can turn that into the finished product and obviously add more into it and sharpen it. But why do we always think it has to be this thing you do off in a mm. chrysalis over here or tucked away in a hut um, in the mountains <laughs> as opposed to live writing it and really seeing if this is responding and resonating with people because some of the best – um, feedback that you get can be incorporated into your book and make it even better. So that's that's something I'd encourage people to do is not look at it as this, oh, my God, I have to write this big book, but what about a series of chapters at a time? 
um, and just go easier on yourself and, and get it out there and test it and see whether it's really going to resonate with people. I love that. Mm, there really are, you know, the rules are all kind of falling away and uh, it's yeah. about now just finding what works for you. I have a, just on that, you know, write the book in pieces. I have a friend, Sebastian, who um, operates in the French market and he literally wrote his book live online people could watch him <laughs> write the book <laughs> and you could see what he was doing on the screen and the things that he was changing and and you know people found that really fascinating and he garnered an audience you know mm -hmm. it, it, they were interested in just being part of the process of writing the book which was great because when it came time or it comes time to launch the book he's kind of got that audience perched and ready to go yeah yeah, I love that. That's I've, I've I remember Jonathan Fields did that as well when he was mm. writing one of his books. Not not the whole time, but he did mm. um, showcase a bit of that. And I think people just love the behind the scenes and and the demystifying of this process that used to be so mysterious. I'd kind of love to get back to the days when you know the novelists would go to these fancy hotels and drink cocktails and hang out with their friends and write these amazing <laughs> stories. I mean, why don't we go back to that? That'd be pretty neat. Oh, I, I'm going to tell me when you're there and I will be there. Okay. I'll be at the bar writing, writing with you. <laughs> Do we have to have people around us smoking? It has to be dark and people have to be smoking. Could it be e and maybe mocktails? Because I'm not drinking either right now. So I realise I just put myself in a context that's not appropriate. But, you know, this is not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> you can have a drink. That's all good. <laughs> Natalie, you have just been such a delight as always. I so love chatting with you. You've shared so many fantastic gems. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. It's been wonderful. It's been a blast. That was terrific. I love the clarity uh, mm. in Natalie's message and she's an incredible speaker actually. Mm, yeah, she's so passionate about what she does and, um, yeah, lots and lots of takeaways. I was scribbling notes the whole time. Um, okay, great. Well, I did too. So do you want to kick us off? What are you taking away? Well, I think the first thing, one of the things I really admire about Natalie is the longevity of her books. So The mm. Suitcase Entrepreneur, you know, it's been around for years. Like she was just saying, it got picked up by, by a publisher, you know, it had been out for four years and um, it's so, still so timely and so relevant that a, a traditional publisher wanted to pick it up and set it out into the US. And, um, you know, when, when we asked her what what's the key, I, I picked up on this idea of this timeless idea you know, that's really um, going to be something mm. that has longevity inherently in the idea. And I also loved how she has found this common thread that mm. she's woven through The Suitcase Entrepreneur and now into her new book, which is Freedom. And I, I think we can all take from that, you know, really get back to what you really stand for, what you really mean. What's the core of your message, that, that timeless heart to your message? I love that you said that because I was thinking, you know, that she that's an uh, idea that she can own in her marketplace. It's what she's known for. And even mm. though, as she tells us, um, she's now looking at a different audience that she's speaking to, it's still about the same core theme that is so important to her personally. Mm. Um, what else? Oh, I'm going to tell you another one? Okay. I've got, I've got a little list here. So um, <laughs> another one that I really loved, she said some. She said um, five words that I thought, oh, God, we all need to hear these words all, mm -hmm. all the time, which is not resting on your laurels. You know, and I think it can be really hard when you, especially with something big like a book where you have spent, in her case, mm. with this new book, a couple of years, yeah. um, the, the, the starting line can sort of feel like the finishing line, you know what I mean? Like you've just finished the book but now you're at the beginning of a whole other part of the process. And then even once you've launched the book, you're at the beginning of another part of the process, which is, okay, how do I keep the book relevant? How do I keep sharing content? You know, and she had some great ideas about um, anniversaries and repurposing content and finding new um, sort of mediums for the content. I love that too. And and it's such a good lesson for us to not just think about what am I going to create next? We create something, we create a model, we write a book, we create a webinar, whatever it is, mm. the piece of content is or the, a live presentation, and we do it once or twice and then we're bored with it and we move on. So staying mm. with that piece of content is 
So important. And I mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad when we were talking with her. And one of the things that was one of the keys, I think, to our success is that we did publicity for that book for 10 years. Like we just kept talking about it, kept talking mm-hmm. about it, kept talking about it, uh, and it kept selling, right? But mm-hmm. if we just gone, okay, well, that one's done and dusted. He's got a new book out now. Let's talk about that. And we've all done that with a new course mm-hmm. or whatever. Or we're looking, you know, it took us so long. It was, you know, we birthed this thing. It was very painful. And now we're looking for something. <laughs> Something else that's new and fresh. And yet mm-hmm. I think that if you look at the exemplars in the world, they have a core message that they that they stay with, you know, mm. and that they, you know, they might change it up, but they're not always on to the next bright, shiny object when it comes to their content. Mm. And, you know, you, you speak about Robert, that rich dad, poor dad, getting back to that timeless idea. Mm. I mean, what a timeless idea that, mm. you know, these generational money ideas get passed down. That's an idea that's not going away. Mm. And so you don't have to leave that brilliant idea behind. You just need to kind of settle into it. And like you say, you, you know, you guys didn't rest on your laurels. You were out there constantly keeping it in the conversation. Mm. We can all learn from that. Mm. The other thing I really loved, and it was very early on in the interview, where Natalie said what I got personally from writing a book was Mm. understanding who I am, who I'm serving, and how I show up in the world. I thought that was very interesting as someone who has never publicly stated but is about to, uh, that I am, you know, people have asked me, I feel like, would you write a book? It's like, no, don't want to write a book, thanks. Thanks for asking. (laughs) And yet in the last (laughs) couple of months I've been thinking, okay, maybe it's time. Maybe I feel like it would really serve people for me to do that because for me to, you know, for me to write a book, it, I don't know, it's very scary. But when I think, oh, wait, I'm going to get better at knowing who I am and who I'm serving and how I'm sh- and it's a way that I'm going to show up in the world, I go, oh, okay, I can get my head around that idea as uncomfortable as the process might be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I really mm-hmm. love that. Yeah, you can hack your own kind of mindset, mm. as we've, we've spoken about before. But I just want to point out something, people, as you're listening. Did we all hear that? <laughs> there, may, there may be something brewing. I'm so excited because, you know, as you know, I've, I've been one of those people sitting by your elbow kind of saying, a book would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, anyway, we'll just let that percolate, right? Yes, percolating away. <laughs> uh, um, so many, so many great things, uh, Natalie. Thank you. Mm. Yes, I like the virtual book launch and the book yes. reading. Yes, right. very cool. Just such a good way to do it. You don't have to to have all the bells and whistles. If you do, if you self-publish and you just kind of, um, you know, don't need to go out and travel the country or travel the world, you can just do it all from home. Mm. One uh, other thing that, again, was there was so much gold in that interview that those of you who are regular listeners of the show will know, Michelle and I, you know, you even said something, it's like singing our song, baby, and that <laughs> is really knowing where this fits. So where is it in your buyer's journey? Which marketing mountain, uh, you know, is it a mountain? Is it a step up the marketing mountain? Mapping out your sales process. Now, if you're a relatively new listener, then you might want to rewind and go back and listen to some of those early episodes that are around things like marketing mountain. Um, Because a book on its own is, is an idea. It doesn't mean it's a great idea. It may not be the right idea for you. But if you heard what Natalie's done, she's designed the book with a particular purpose in mind and that was her program. And so it's a way that people, lots of people, hopefully, are going to come into her world but then she has a plan for them. And the plan is that for those for whom it is relevant and right, they're going to watch the video series, then they're going to go on and do her accelerator program. So she's thought of that ahead of time. She hasn't thought, well, let's see how this book goes and let me pop a couple of ads in the book for people to come to my Mm. website or maybe join my newsletter and then I'll figure it out. No, it's very deliberate and that is why Mm. it'll be so powerful. Mm, yeah, you know, completely, completely love it, love it, love it. And, you know, it gets back to the heart, I think, of what this show's about, which is no content without conversion. And mm. you put so much effort into a book. It's a huge piece of content. You really want to, not only for yourself, but for the people that are reading the book, give them that next step forward. Mm. And this is the quote of quotes. I am going to use this quote, Natalie, if you're listening. <laughs> when would now be a good time to do that? I love that. 
I love that. <laughs> Members, if you're listening, expect to hear it. <laughs> when would now be a good time to do that? All right, very good. Thank you, Natalie. Um, now, Natalie's giving us access to the first three chapters of her book, Absolutely Free. Sorry, did you have any other takeaways, Michelle, before I tell people how oh, to get Oh, I have heaps, but no, let's find out about the book. Okay. Let's find out about the three chapters. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> three chapters, Absolutely Free. Um I'm going to give you a URL to go to. You want to scroll down, like right at the top, you can go ahead and click the buy button and buy the book and you can get it from Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all the great places that you can still buy books. Um, we'll put a link also in our show notes. But on the page, if you scroll right to the bottom, you'll see first three, first three chapters free. The URL is thefreedomplan.co, thefreedomplan.co. Now, the other place that you can find Natalie is on her Facebook page. So you can either search for Natalie Sisson. That's probably the best way to go. Otherwise, it's facebook.com, like www.facebook.com forward slash Natalie Sisson. And that's S-I-S-S-O-N. So you want to get a hold of that. Um, the other thing is if you're thinking that a book is in your future or maybe you're even working on one right now, there's an episode we did just a little while back um, with the wonderful Linda Diggle from The Book Boffin. And it goes a little more into how you actually produce your book and how do you get it to market and that includes getting it on Amazon. So that's episode 55, How to Use a Book to Grow Your Brand, Your Profits and Your Profile with Linda Diggle. And we will put the link uh, in our show notes and um, so you'll find those over on herbusiness.com. All right, we love to share the tips that guests like the wonderful Natalie Sisson uh, bring uh, with as many business owners as possible. So we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. We've got over 68 five-star reviews. Um, That's just in the Australian store. And of course, the podcast is available internationally. Um, So if you enjoyed today's episode, we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review. The other thing we'd love for you to do is join us over on Facebook. We've got a Facebook page where you can ask questions that we'll answer right there in the Facebook page, but we'll also give you a shout out here on the show. And one of the people who recently left a comment is the lovely Belinda Weaver and uh, of uh, Copyright Matters. And she says, I'm just catching up uh, on content sales with Susie and Michelle. I've made a bunch of notes about post-sales emails that I'm going to tweak to be more reassuring. And that was the episode we did about reassuring people as the first step after they buy from you. Thanks for the tips, ladies, she says. So that was episode 76 that Belinda's referring to, how to reassure people after they buy from you. Thank you, Belinda. And so if you want a shout out on the show, go ahead and leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts um, or um, jump into the Content Cells Facebook page and say hi. Michelle, what do we have coming up? Well, this next episode I'm quite excited Mm -hmm. about because we're unplugging a little bit. Uh, We're going to have a heart-to-heart conversation. Susie and I have lots and lots of (laughs) heart-to-heart conversations, (laughs) but we don't always record them. And so we're going to be talking about some of the things that we've been talking about in private, really, about the things we've been going through lately as we step into um, more and more kind of standing out, being seen, being heard more and more on bigger stages or in different platforms. And, you know, it's not always easy and how we are navigating that and how you might navigate that as well. So you can be really be seen and really be heard. In the next episode. Mm, That's coming up two weeks from now. So if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, um, you probably know what to do, <laughs> but what it is, you want to click that subscribe button over on uh, Apple Podcasts and then um, that episode will drop right into your mobile phone or wherever you listen to podcasts uh, when that's out, which is two weeks from the date that we're releasing this one. That's today's show. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go? Well, I want to say a huge thank you again to Natalie Sisson. Thank you for being on the show and sharing all your gems. And um, I just wanted to also just give a shout out to the book itself, The Freedom Plan. Um, I just love the idea of small business owners. We're all working Mm -hmm. hard. We're all putting in lots of hours. And I think the message in there is really worth um, just, you know, even if you're downloading those first three chapters or go ahead and buy the book, I think the message itself is going to be a good one for all of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We'll see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast.